All right, there we go. Good. So let's see if this actually works. What program are you using for your show, Terry? This is a bridge. So um, just, you know, first I wanna say thank you to Stephanie and thanks to my brother and my dear friend, Margaret, who's not on the call, uh, who helped me curate um, this. I have lots and lots of photos. I, I, I dabble in many, many different topics, but we're gonna cover just a few here today. Travel, street, photojournalism, um, and some photo art and specialty type things along those lines. Um, I've been interested in photography my entire life, but um, it, 2005 is probably when I really started getting interest, really serious about it. I took a lot of workshops, worked with a lot of professionals, and um, tried to get good at it. You know, I tried to forget everything I did for a living. Um, anyway, I want to start it with this because this is a very kind of, you know, the tragic event we're in, we're, we're watching on TV every day. But um, I, I got took this picture of of this poster on an alley in Paris a few couple of years ago. And boy, sure, sure makes a lot of sense right now. Um, I'm going to start with United States travel. Um, and I do a lot of road trips. Um, and my travel is, is I do a lot of advanced planning for when I do trips. And this photo here has no planning at all. I'll talk about that in a moment. But normally I, I'm, I'm, I check out the tides, I check out the sun, the, the moon, I chart it all out. Uh, Trish, you've been on trips with me, you know, you're pretty familiar with the, what I do to, to, to set my own scene to know what's going on. And I, I do a lot of planning. But this photo here was taken at the 2017 Women's March. It's pouring rain. I don't know how many of you were at that march. Peg, you probably were there. Um, and um, I, I look down this street, I'm on the march, we're almost to the end of the march, and I see this scene, and I'm photographing through a rain cover on my camera, so I couldn't see the settings. Um, I leaned up against a light post, I snapped off three shots, and I've got this image. Um, it is sold probably 30 times, mostly in metal, um, very reflective. So it's something I was very happy to get. Um, those folks of you that live in Marin know about, probably know about Point Ray, um, um, Mendocino and the Bowling Ball Beach. Um, Don, Don, Donald, you been up there? No, I haven't, but uh, a good friend of mine has, yeah. So this is, this is a place where you really wanna check out low tides with light. Sometimes your negative tide is in the middle of the night. Doesn't gonna, isn't gonna help you much. But um, so you've got to match the tide with the, with the usually the sunrise. Um, and uh, you, you're, you just sit there, you get there early enough and you just wait for the tide to come in and you do slow motion shot um, on a tripod. Yeah. Mono Lake. Um, this, uh, the, all the photographers that were there on this particular day were looking the other direction at the sunset. And mm -hmm. I turned around and looked at the, the other side. Donald, you mentioned that the other day when we were out at um, uh, Loch Lomond. Yeah. It's yeah. often the other side of the sunset that's really important. And, and yeah. that's exactly what I got. And you can see the sun reflecting on that, those hills in the background, the golden hills. Yeah. And, uh, but that was a uh, beautiful Quite a shot. contrast. Bodhi, yeah. Th this is a selective color photograph, and it was really painstaking to get all that grass gray and keep mm -hmm. that rust. Um, and so this is taken at Bodhi uh, State Historical uh, Park, another California place most people get to at one point or another. Um, I've been there a bunch of times. Um, great, just wonderful place. Um, anybody know Marty Knapp? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah Marty definitely. and I went out and did Joshua Tree for a week on, on a super bloom in 2016. We got up about four in the morning and went out to, to shoot. We were actually going to, looking for the Milky Way, and we did get some of that. I'm, I'm not very good at that type of photography, but this was my silhouetted shot. I really loved this shot of the, of the Joshua Trees and the, uh, the, the, the dropping moon or rising moon. I don't know what it was at that time. So beautiful. Yeah. Death Valley. 
I've been to Death Valley 10 times. I don't go too much anymore because I'm not so much about getting up at three in the morning uh, to get out on the dunes, but you really have to go out there. You have to leave really early because the wind picks up overnight, gets rid of all the footprints. Oh. And you want to see the sun hit, hit the dunes and the shadows. Yeah. Um, and it's a long walk. It doesn't seem like a long walk from the, from the, uh, but walking on sand, you know, yeah. with a, with you know, fifty pounds of camera gear, um, yeah. you, you'll yeah. feel it. But uh, is it a longer just, walk back, Terry? Uh, yeah, usually it is. <laughs> and honestly, here's the deal: if the wind picks up, you've got to get out of there really quick because there's nothing worse than sand and cameras. Um, we actually put all our camera gear in black plastic bags. You change the lenses in the black in the plastic bag. Good idea. You know, you do not want that fine sand. You, you can't see it, but it'll get inside the camera. So, you know, it's just a little trick of the trade. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot, Terry. That texture on that foreground is incredible. Yeah. And you can see this is an F-22 yeah. ISO 100. Um, so I'm shooting on a tripod. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this was just taken a couple of weeks ago. Um, and my wife, who's, who's got Parkinson's, she was testing out her new rollator. And so we, we took her out there and went on the trail. I thought it'd be a great place. And of course, I've got, I have to take a camera and look at those light beams um, yeah. over Redwood Creek. Yeah. What kind of lens were you using back in Death Valley? You know, probably uh, it, that was before I had the newer one. So it's probably a um, F4, um, uh, 70, 70. Uh, 24, uh, 105. Or 124, something like that. 24 one, something like that. I think it's 24 105. Yeah. Yeah, I meant I meant I should have mentioned I, I all of my gear is canon. So all your gear is what? Canon. Oh, canon. Yeah. So this photo, um, it's got a little bit of a story to it. Um, I posted this photo on a couple of Oregon sites, got something like 20,000 likes. Wow. On it. Really amazing. I, I didn't realize how many people in Oregon like their coastal ships shots. And uh, but it, I, I focused uh, about a third of the way down on the steps. Um, it has a very low uh, F stop, but I still managed to get a fair amount of detail out of yeah. it. Um, you know, so it was a uh, just an amazing shot, just a, what we call a line of sight shot. So how many I mean, if you look at it real close, it's it's got some grain in it. But uh, how many calendars is that shot in, Terry? Huh? How many calendars yeah, yeah. is that shot it's, in? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Should I assume you did a ton of work on that sky, or is that what it looked like that day? I popped it out. It's really yeah. neat. Love yeah. it. Nice job. Now I asked that question on this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This guy, um, well, it wasn't exactly like that. But needless to say, it needed some more something besides a blown out white sky, and so I did a little bit, a little bit add to it. Yeah. But the original photograph was actually all about the pampas grass, all about the grass, you know. And that's that's what I focused on yeah. um, with the, with the uh, F10, so decent depth of field, um, and I, we we photographed this this lighthouse from every direction you could possibly imagine but this was my best shot and then um, on the way out of oregon this is a two-shot series here um i went to buy my daughter a, a t-shirt and this lady said hey you got to go over to lithia park and um so we went over to lithia park and boy look at this park it wow. was just gorgeous i mean the reflective on this pond Oh, it's just an amazing. I've never seen so much, so, so much color in one place. Mm. For anybody who wants to get to the slots, this is well worth it. Um, Arizona, this is a Navajo country, and um, there are a couple of slots in this series. We had to crawl through this little, little uh, oh. thing. So, um, Again, mo all these shots in this in this area is all done on tripod to get the because it's at f14. Um, but there, um, as you can see, the, the reflective light. And I've got I've got light 
some with beams and all kinds of other things. Every I'm just pulling up some sampling, but you know I've got lots and lots of photographs of this. But um, you hire a guide or, or a tour or whatever. We had a private guide that, um, that took us through these things, so we had quite a bit of time in each of these areas um, to photograph it. It's amazing, as you can see. I would be really interested in seeing people's side-by-side -side photos of as shot and as finished. You'll see, well, I, I don't think I have too many of those, but you'll, you'll see some other things with some comparison, but that's something good for the future. Yep. This, this is um, dunes, but this is white sands. And anybody who knows anything about white sands, it's actually not sand at all, it's gypsum. So, um, and again, I got there very early in the morning and all the, the only the only footprints were, I guess, lizards. Yeah, <laughs> that's about all that was there. Yeah, yeah. you can you can see there, there's definitely animal tracks of some yeah. sort. Um, Mo Monument Valley, Monument Valley uh, Tribal Park. Um, again, usually I try to hire a guide if I'm going back in. Guides can be very inexpensive. I mean, this guy charged me like 60 bucks and took me back for several hours. And in the <laughs> Monument Valley, you can only go on the tourist trail, the paved thing. We actually went off road. So I'm back in there with my four wheeler and the yeah. sand and the mesa and everything else and, and, and to get these types of shots. And I'm on top of a mesa here. Um, really, really, uh, you know, I, 60 bucks took me out there for almost six hours. Wow. Yeah, I, I don't know how he makes a living, to tell you the truth, but. Wow. Yeah. What time of year? Uh, this was in the spring. Probably April. <laughs> no. The Palouse. Anybody been to the Palouse? No. <laughs> another, another place with beautiful skies. Um, <laughs> and um, a lot of form. This has been popped out a little bit, but it's it's um, just a gorgeous place. Really? Same thing from... Um, <sighs> Steptoe uh, Butte. Unbelievable. And and by the way, to get to this Butte, you have to get up at three in the morning because the nearest hotel is probably an hour or two hours away. So you can catch the sun coming up and then you got to drive up to the top of the Butte and, and catch the sun coming up. And then you'll see all these colors. This was taken in June. Really? Um, you know, so they're, they're, you can see the various, they, they grow wheat, they grow lentils, different types of soy and other kinds of things out there but so everything's got its own set of colors it's incredible yeah. and um the albuquerque balloon fiesta um i've been there twice um can't remember which one this was but this was the night uh, the night glow they don't fly the balloons at night they only fly them in the morning but at night they light them all up and it's just a spectacular Amazing. shot Can I ask a question about that last image? Yeah. So you shot it at F, or you shot it at an eighth of a second. So yeah, on. how come everybody is still? How come everybody looks sharp? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I mean, they're, they're all standing still. <laughs> they just, you just said, don't move, and they all stood there. Yeah. Hold I, I, I'm at IS four, ISO 400. I'm on a tripod, um, you know, so. But you're right. I mean, these are these are the actual um, uh, mm -hmm. metadata that came off the image. Mm -hmm. So, uh, wow. and I have no idea. It was a long time ago. Um, different camera. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, um, wow. In the last ten years, I've been to I don't know how many countries in Europe, and um, I, unfortunately, the last two years I haven't been anywhere. Um, yeah. There's an interesting story. I was talking to Stephanie about this. <laughs> I can't sell this photo because it, it the light show of the Eiffel Tower is copyrighted. Oh. And in order to sell it, you have to get permission from the people that hold the copyright. Oh, you can take the photos and you can post them, but can't you can't sell. technically sell them. Now, I don't know how that works versus you know, US versus France, but they just say you don't want to mess around with them. Um, but this was taken in a rainstorm 
uh, my wife was holding an umbrella over my head while I was trying to take this photo. Um, but anyway, it turned out to be real, real nice. Wow. By the way, when you go to Death Valley and some of these other places, if you go in there with a group and you got a bunch of tripods, you need to get a photographer's permit to photograph there. Uh, even at Mount Tam, I think they have the same thing. If you show up with a lot of people, uh, yeah. state parks and national parks, yeah. Cove Ireland, uh, Cobb Ireland, uh, reflections, just, I mean, I love reflections. Who yep. cannot love reflections? Beautiful. Venice, the sunrise. Wow. Great colors. Toronto, more reflections. Um, I mean, it's just you know, when you go to Venice, it's just it's just. What, what time of day was that, uh, Terry? What time of day? Uh, it's probably in the morning. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know like and um, you know, we get I got a variety of weather over there. So um, we got clouds and some bright blue skies, but a lot a lot of cloudy days when I was there. <laughs> the, this is not far from my brother and mine's. Uh, Great grandfather's home in Valtago, Italy, and this is the Dolomiti. And I I drove around all around up in this area for a couple of uh, couple of days while I was visiting Valtago. Um, just amazing. I mean, we think we've got beautiful landscape. Italy is just it's just out of this world when you get up into the uh, up into the Dolomiti. Um, Edinburgh, Scotland, old town. Great shot. I, I, I failed to mention that I, I have this filing methodology, but one thing I do is I have close to 200 themes that I put photos in. And this is in an arch theme. So things mm -hmm. with arches. And um, I just happen to like this. Um, there's a little bit of play on this. I, I, I grayed out the arch, but left the people walking through it in color. You know, and then the background and colors. Oh. So you can do some techniques here with the uh, software. I didn't even notice that until you mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it'd be more brownish. Yeah. 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 So they're rebuilding it, but it, but this was the year before um, Notre Dame burned. Um, now, now it's all scaffolds. Wow. And I, I was supposed to be going to Paris in, next week. But that trip got canceled, so just as well because I don't want to take pictures of these scaffolds. And um, the place that I stay at, this little apartment I rent, is is maybe a ten minute walk to the Louvre. And um, so I had planned to take this photo um, and and wait for the Louvre to close, wait for the pot, the people to clear the area, and then get it right when the sun was going down. You can see the stars, so F-18 is going to give you some stars uh, over there on the left. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a pretty natural natural shot taken on a tripod. Um, so the, the higher your f-stop is, the more likely you're going to get uh, starbursts in your photos. Mm -hmm. In Cuba, I spent two weeks in Cuba a couple of years ago. Um, I'm going to show some photos of this, but way back in the distance, there is a little farm, a little, and I'm going to show, I think it might be the next photo, um, but this is the Vanales uh, Valley. Oh, there, next one is uh, the Malacan in, in Havana, and I didn't know I even got this shot until I went back and looked. I didn't realize I had picked up the, uh, the light beams. Mm. This is Sundown Fisherman. This is the this is the farm that I mentioned that is in the background of that previous photo. You, if you go back way back into, I can't point it, you won't see it, but way back there you see a little white house. That's this house here. And Anna and Francisco um, run the at that time they've now retired from it. They ran this non-mechanized farm. They they did all their work with oxen and and carts. Um, and I'll show a picture of those two a little later. Um, just city life in Havana. It's just a, the, the whole area is just stopped still 60 years ago. Um, lots of old cars, um, buildings in disrepair, but people are happy. You know, they, well, they were when I was there. I mean, I, things have changed quite a bit now. But 
um, Dingle, Ireland. Just a side light coming in over the, the fog burning off. What kind of elevation gain is there from where you are to the top of that hill? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm on a road looking down at it. Um, I, I couldn't tell you precisely the elevation piece of it, but um, you know, that that mountain is fairly, fairly tall, but everything is coming out of sea level. That's the thing about it. It's almost like Marin County where Mount Tam looks a lot taller than it actually is, you know, um, yeah. because it comes right out of sea level. Yeah. I heard all about these white horses of the Kamaru and, you know, we drove all around this national park. I couldn't find any. And then I was driving from one spot to another and I, I spied these, these horses. I, the traffic was heavy. I pulled off the side of the road and just so happened to have a 300 millimeter on my camera and was able to get this shot of these two, these two uh, horses going at it. Um, but they're, they're just, the wild horses are like Mustangs, you know, that roam around the, uh, this park. Mm. Little street photography in Venice. Um, this guy looks like some kind of guru of some sort. Um, and a little street photography. These are, these are both, this was taken from a boat. This was a hip shot. You know, I just, you know, I didn't ask permission or anything. I just took the picture, two artists having a conversation, you know, and um, that's perfectly great street, street photography. Sure. This is a, this is a series of three shots of Manarola. Nice. Um, so this is the first night, F11 on a tripod. Night two, same spot. Oh. Um, we stayed in that little pink hotel right there in the center of the, of the thing on the balcony. Um, and then third night was the money shot. Oh. And, uh, this one here has done real good for me as well. So once again, you can see I'm now at F-22. I've got some starbursts on it. Um, you, you also, you see the milky uh, texture of the water. You know, when you're shooting yeah. on a tripod at, at 30 seconds, F-22, you're going to get that type of effect, um, and and it's it's still a reasonably sharp and good depth of field on, on the image. Oh, so when when you're saying starburst, you mean just the lights? I, I was the light. I was when trying they, to find the stars in the sky. So yeah, no, no, starburst of the lights. It's exactly right. So got it. Got and it. and yeah, you know, depending, you can get them very very sharp. You can also add them. They're a little fakeish with topaz or one of the other softwares. I, I prefer not. I prefer to try to get my own naturally. Yeah. Okay. How are we doing on time, Stephanie? We're at 23 minutes. <clears throat> All right. This is uh, Francisco. He lived on that farm. Mm -hmm. um, this this is taken with a, um, I don't do a lot of single focal lens, but this is a F1-2 lens. Um, and, wow. you know, it is, it's, it's on my business card. I, this is one of my, uh, we've won a couple of awards in the past. Um, it's, it's just a really, really good picture, but, um, you know, it, it, you can see the, the over his, his shoulder, there's a light beam coming in. So the smoke is backlit. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see it right in his face. And this is his wife, uh, Anna, um, while he was rolling us cigars in the back room, she was making us demi tosses and brought them out and assortment of different cups and stuff like that there, there was uh, 10 of us at, on this little tour oh man how did you meet these people you just you were on tour you want a tour I, I was on i was on a photography tour it's it's really the way you want to do cuba and a lot of, of countries mm -hmm. of this type you want to go with a tour not a tourist tour a photography tour where they've got connections they yeah. get you to the right places they know the people uh they can get you into their homes um, and so we managed to get to a lot of places that, um, you know, the average tourist wouldn't see, uh, or they would see it in a, such a huge group, you couldn't do much more than just be in everybody's way. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, like I said, they, this was a non, uh, they, they had no mechanical, just mechanical equipment, no electric, no, no diesel, no nothing on the whole farm. And they raised their tobacco and rolled their own um, uh, thing. We walked across that entire valley and showed you in our previous picture. Recent photo taken um, 
just somebody waiting for a bus, taking a nap while they're doing it. Another street photography, um, perfectly legitimate street photography. Somebody looking down the street. You're going to see from my portraitures, I don't always need to feel, I don't need the eye on me, but I like it that way. But I also like to show it. So here's a portraiture that also is a combination of street. So the person's not looking at me, is looking down the street. She knows I'm taking her photograph, um, but she's looking down the street towards something else. I didn't ask her to pose. I couldn't, I didn't speak Spanish, um, but that, that turned out to be, I just laid in a blue door. And look at the dirt on the top sill. Yep. People hang there by their fingers a lot. Well, in, in Cuba, the people spend a lot of time hanging out their doors and out their windows. <laughs> so it's, it, it, it's hot there. They don't have air conditioning, um, you know, and people, they, they're in the street all the time. And so they're constantly communicating with each other through their, and they have all these Dutch doors and Dutch window types. Yeah. You know? So in this particular case, it's a, it's a window um, and not a yeah. door. It's great. This is, a, this is a car mechanic. Uh, I went, I looked into the, to the thing to see what he was doing. And then he came to the window and I asked if I could take his picture. And um, you can tell he's got, his hands are a little blistered up there. I mean, obviously as you can tell he's, he's a mechanic and he, he was working on vintage cars. They, they will, most of the cars there are general, uh, general motors. They're mostly from the fifties. And so as you, anybody who's as old as uh, a few of us knows that in the 50s, most of the General Motors parts were interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And Oldsmobile, Buick, <laughs> Pontiac, they all used the same stuff. Yeah. Move offers from one to the next. So, yeah. This was taken up in uh, Sonoma at the Katmand, um, Katmandu uh, Festival. Um, I want thing popped up again. Um, Kind of on this, on this, if I can get rid of this. I don't know if you guys are seeing that or not. Um, this was just on the street, Market Street. You know, um, I asked if I could take his picture, and he said, Yeah. And he put his hand out, and I gave him five bucks. <laughs> yeah. So, but it just, you know, you, you, you sometimes wonder how old these folks are. But you'd be surprised quite often the street ages their faces. Um, yep. So, I mean, he may not have been that old. He could have been in his early 60s when he might look a lot older than that. But uh, it's a great shot. I'm stuck. Uh, wait a minute. There you go. I loved the texture in the shot before, too, the woman in Sonoma. Yeah. Um, kind of on, the, this is just on the street type thing at Goat Rock and Jenner. Um, you know, this guy, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've done to this. I've, I've changed the background on it. Um, you know, the, um, it's, and it's got a grunge filter on top of it. Sometimes when a photo is not that clear or not that sharp, you know, doing a little bit of grunge to it or some other stuff can make it a really nice photo. Um, and so it, it just, I just happened to like how he was dressed and everything, smoking his joint, you know. There's a similar guy, but he's he's actually a protester at a Yemeni rally. Um, he's got the Yemeni flag uh, wrapped, a Yemen flag wrapped around him. Great job. I'm going to show you this picture because this is a series of two pictures, and um, take a look at the glasses at the top. You see that fogginess up there in the mountains. Yeah, you just Hi. look at the top of the rim of her glasses. Mm -hmm. Now look, exact same photo. Wow, really? Yeah. You didn't retouch that? I don't recall retouching it. Um, I, I would have had to have been very good at what I did. Huh. I might have done a fade on it, on, this, on the thing, but I couldn't get rid of it in the color. But when you're dealing with tones, yeah. you can... You can do that with gray tone. You cannot do it with colors. Yeah. So it just goes to show you that going to black and white, particularly on portraits, is a huge advantage because 
these are these are like two different photos you know mm -hmm. um you know to me i i mean granted the crop's a little different but um you know her eyes are popping out a lot better in this photo here yeah black and white improves all kinds of portraits especially it, if people have red skin tones yeah sure does um yeah. now we're going to get to some um some more event photography and some um, nice so earrings best. yeah yeah, great area. Day of the Dead is a great place to go. This is Garfield Square in the in the mission. The folks love to be photographed. Um, I always ask, you know, because I want their eye contact. They're always decorated up um, beautifully. And uh, you know, this this is this was taken at the first one I actually went to. Uh, it was actually pretty dark that night. Um, but I, I did clean up the background a little bit um, and, and didn't do any vignetting on it. I just darkened it all up, popped her out. There's Ralph. Um, and by the way, that was Marta before. So I do get their names when I came. I carry a little pad with me and I write people's names down. Ralph is he's a legend when it comes to decorating himself in, at Carnival. I've got him on probably four or five different shots, different decor, different outfits. Um, this was taken with a 300 millimeter across the street. I'm working the parade, um, <laughs> but when you once the parade is moving, you can't often back go back and forth. So he was on the other side. It was just a beautiful shot, and I, I managed to get it. And darn sharp, he's looking at me, but I don't think he's actually looking at me because you know I'm probably 80 feet away. How much have you cropped that photo? Not much. Not much. And I didn't soften the background either. So it's shot at F4. Oh. And again, I like smoke. This is the this lady is part of the blessing, uh, the Aztec blessing that, that uh, they do for the carnival every year. Smoke's hard to hard to photograph, but uh, it's this was I, I'll call it a luck shot. <laughs> <laughs> So a little story behind this. I'm working with a scrum of 14 photographers. We're eight feet in front of this bench, all crammed in together in front of a hedge. So we couldn't even back up. And I'm the only one for some reason that had a wide angle lens on. And so I, I shot this at uh, probably F16 or something like that. And um, uh, this is it's timing, right place, right time, pure luck. Um, and I caught the guy in action, and and I, I said I gave the photo to him, um, which I do. And if I know the people, I'll, I'll get that photo over to him. I'll connect with them or whatever. But um, I don't think I could do this twice. Tell you the truth. <laughs> Great shadows down below, so I guess the sun was straight up. Yeah, yeah, it's the middle of the day. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I thank you for mentioning that because I did not notice that before. <laughs> what year was that? I think this is 2018. Okay, I think might, I was there. You might have been, yeah. yeah. <laughs> another another uh, carnival shot. I, I've done carnival many years now. Um, I'm one of the volunteer photographers. Um, and what's notable about this photo is that it was the marketing piece for the Fat Tuesday. Oh, oh that's so, good. You know, they picked it up, got my little name oh. on the bottom. So this is 2019, it says right there. <clears throat> the photo was in 2019, but this is the 2020. This is the last <laughs> event I did before COVID, March 25th. And I'm excuse me, February 25th, and COVID hit what? The, the next. Part, the next month we got hit by COVID. March fifteenth. So, yeah. Another smoke shot. This is Chris. Um, and again, this is in color and then in black and white. I happen to like the color better on the on this little series here. A mm -hmm. little bit of a protest. Ukraine's at the top of our mind. Um, I just happen to like this photo. Um, you know, the the uh, for some reason I saw this lady with this jacket on and the signs in the background. And one of the things I remember telling Stephanie about the whole thing about protests is that 
you, you want to get the signs. You want to get the people in, in, and get, you know, give evidence that it's, it's, it's a protest and there's, where are they located? I mean, anybody knows San Francisco? No, that's the ferry Fair building. building. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Uh, this is taken at um, uh, Chrissy, uh, Marina Green. And it's a Black Lives Matters photo. Um, I just happen to like it. It does have some work on it. It's got some vignetting going on. Mm -hmm. um, the background has been um, desaturated a little bit. Um, not to pop, mostly to pop her out, but not by popping her out, but by reducing the color in the background. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a great shot. This guy was getting arrested. Um, this is the climate summit. Um, and you know, these, these are the kind of shots you, as a, as a photojournalist, you want to get these kinds of shots because they, they, uh, you know, they're showing the real action of what's really going on. Um, yeah. Extinction Rebellion, doing some theater. Mm. Um, these ladies dress up um, and do all kinds of interesting stuff, but this is all climate related uh, against the against Wells Fargo. An amazing photo. And once again, another one, uh, another just typical protest um, and you know, it, it, we all we all know what goes on with Breonna Taylor. So. This this image here um, of John and her daughter um, was a ribbon winner uh, for photojournalism at the Marin County Fair. Um, and after I picked it up, I drove to San Francisco, found Johan, and gave her the photo. I kept the ribbon, but I gave her the photo. <laughs> Photo art, selective color. And, um, I don't do too much of this anymore, but um, I, 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 I like to play with it, you know. Um, Sanibel Island, rainbow, rainbow um, thing. I, I like, this is kind of what I do in the evening sometimes when I got nothing better to do. And um, I just play with photos because, you know, every image you shoot, you can, have it in color you can have it black and white you can do some impressionistic you, you, there's a lot of things you can do with photos and it just you, you, in my way it just keeps me entertained did you paint a lot of that with a uh, wacom or with the pen or did you do a lot of that software it's all done with software and, and sometimes it's multiple apps on top of apps mm -hmm. so um i i will um it, it's art at this point so if there's something in there i don't like if there's a person someplace i don't want in the photo I'll take them out, you know, so it's pure art. Terry, I'm just reminding you because you said you wanted me to, um, you're at 38 minutes. 30, 30, well, we're, we're almost done. Perfect. Um, so, um, so this is a, this is taken in uh, Paris. Um, yes, I a little fall color. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is just a, it's a lovely scene, you know, uh, it's lovely even without, even without the impressions. Yeah. This is taken right here in Jordan of Vineyard. Um, taken in um, Lisbon, the Ch Chicago uh, Square. Um, I meet these people. Um, I photographed this lady and then we went out someplace else across town to have some ice cream and they showed up and they did the dance right in front of us again <laughs> the same night. I can't see your exposures. I'd love to see, or can you see F28, it? F28, F, this is handheld, by the way. So this F28, 130, uh, ISO 250. Mm -hmm. Bath, England. Um, again, oh. so similar type. Um, I happen to, happen to like, this is the uh, Edward Hopper uh, filter. I just happen to like it a lot, oh. what, it, what it does. And I use Topaz mostly in my impressionistic work. Um, infrared, Mountain Mount Tam. That's cool. Don't Beautiful. do too much infrared. I got a camera that's set up for infrared. Um, infrared it's all back through there yesterday. Yeah, I, I just it it just takes me extra effort to get the camera out, so I just hardly ever do. It. I, I don't do it a lot, but um, I got I, I it, it's always fun. 
at the right situation. Well, then we're coming to the end of this. I've got about six more slides. Mm. Th this is going to show the before and after of, of an impressionistic series. So this was the shot I took in uh, Castlecombe, England. And this is the impressionistic shot. As you can see, I removed the, the road lines. Because my idea was when they built this town, they didn't have road lines. Yeah. And there, you can still see the bicycle in the back, you know, um, beautiful little town. Um, nice job, this is man. a this is an alley in uh, this is an award winner as well an alley in um, uh, Porto, and it's funny. I, my one of the, the Margaret, the lady that helped me with um, some of the um, curating, she does digital art and she loves animals. And I didn't even notice that there was a cat <laughs> in the image until she told me because I'm not an fan. I don't have pets except coyotes. Um, and uh, so that was the first shot. And th this was the one that actually won the award, was oh. the impressionistic one. And it's interesting, I have to say, that, that the guy on the right there, uh, um, on the original photo, and if I, I um, uh, but Sierra said he'd like to see the originals, you could not see his face. I shoot in raw. So I was able to pop out his face just by adjusting the exposure. Um, but it, it wasn't it wasn't even visible in, in the original that came out of the camera. But by going back into raw and adjusting the exposures, I was able to pull the face out. It was there all along. It was just darkened. And then this is in Havana. And um, and again, here's the impressionistic shot. Mm. And that is it. I thought that was San Quentin. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Gary, thank you so much. It's coming back to you now, dear. All right. All right. So we're gonna we're starting a tradition here or a custom. We're gonna have um, our presenter will be the person coming up with our um, with our challenge of the month. And let me get that on the screen. If you want to take a screenshot, you can. Yeah. Terry's Street. proposing we hit the streets and do some street photography. Yep. Uh, right. Well, I'll be in San Francisco all next week, so I'll have the opportunity. You're going to be way ahead of all of us, though. Great. Okay. Yeah, really. <laughs> We're going to see your feet shots. <laughs> actually, actually, it'll just be my cell phone, though. I'm not going to take my good camera over there. Okay. Well, just cell phone. But if you take pictures of your own feet, we'll know. Yeah, Let's just yeah. take your cat into MoMA, and I'll take pictures of it. Yeah, there, there you go. I'll try. So the whale fest is this weekend in Monterey, so I'll get some, hopefully, some cool images of people admiring things. There you go. Perfect. Some fishermen. Yeah, if you see them. <laughs> you got to get up early. <laughs> So the next thing I want to mention, oh, and after you shoot, make sure you post them on Facebook so we can all see what you've done. And the other thing I want to mention is our next presenter will be Raven Skye, who's here tonight. And she says she is an urban wildlife photographer focusing on native and urban wildlife. So this should be very, very interesting. And the last thing I want to say, we are planning our next field trip. We have a date. I found this little uh, mm. graphic. I like how it said this 150 foot Ferrisville is a whirling, 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 whirling. Why can't I say that? Blinking, spinning tangle of LED lights. So we thought we'd all go to the um, Ferrisville in San Francisco from six to eight. And I'm frantically looking up the date here because I forget what it is. Do you remember, Donald? The 25th. The 25th of March from Friday 6 night. to 8. I'm going to post more information about that. Um, I just ran out of time. And uh, Terry and Donald both say that parking is very tricky. So we should try to carpool if we can. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it, everybody. We, should can, I we, can, we can post some information about parking. It's best to park by Botanical Gardens. Um, okay. You know, things like we can look, we can get all the information out. 
I'll, I'll make a flyer and post it on Facebook. Just Great. mark that date. Great. Miriam, you're, you're um, trying to talk, but you're uh, muted. Are you trying to unmute, Miriam? Yes. Little uh, button on the left, bottom left. I'm unmuted. There you are. It's hard to mute. Oh, Miriam. weird. Um, so does, hey, tuna fish. So does going to a park count as streets? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It's grandson, public. Yeah, it's my grandson's birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. Decked out as fairies. So. You can and you can post just for the record. You can post anything you want. It's just one of the great things about these challenges. I don't know about all of you, but it's it kind of I kind of think about it all the time now because I know I have, you know, spring. I was definitely thinking about spring all the time because of Donald's uh, challenge. So I know this is going to help me to, to to force me to get out and shoot more. So I, I love that. I mean, it could be Fairfax, street photography in Fairfax. It doesn't have to be San Francisco. Does, does it have to be a new photograph, a new one? No, or it could be anything. No rules, okay. at least not at this point. Okay, I'll, try, I'll try to make it new, but yeah. Okay. I like your hat, Arnold. Oh, yeah, I'm changing, <laughs> changed my name to Arnold. <laughs> Until the good name is restored, I have to go this way. <laughs> It's blue too. Definitely pulling out of blue, so there shouldn't, shouldn't be too much problem. Stephanie, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys around town. I heard my name. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Uh, they, uh, I have the pleasure of seeing a lot of what Terry has presented long before you have. I, I get the comment on them, and uh, uh, Terry you will. We'll tell you some. Uh, there's one photo in there that you saw of the lady at the bus stop. That was a very, very interesting one because when I saw it, I looked at the time on her watch, and kind of wrote Terry a story about what I thought that picture really what what she was doing and that she was uh, perhaps where where she was working and so forth. It was is. But I have some, the pleasure of seeing these long before you all do it. And I have to compliment him on he does just an absolute super job. Thank you, brother. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. By you the way, it, it, it's interesting when you do street photography to think about a story that that street image might tell. You, you know, and you know, to me, I think when you put it together, just like Pat was doing there, you put a story to the photo. It doesn't even have to be accurate. But just what do you think that person's story might be? Um, because you don't know them. You don't know anything about what's going on. You know, I, love, I just make it up myself. But <laughs> so. Great. I've been making up my own story every day. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miriam knows that truth. I've known her since I was like 16. <laughs> Miriam where, Miriam, where do you live? Are you in Fairfax? Yeah, oh. for now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've known Miriam for years. <laughs> I can, I can vouch for her. <laughs> We've never met. <laughs> no, we haven't. Well, we're meeting right now. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Glad to meet you. I stayed but in Miriam's tent. Sarah was a young yeah. one when I knew him. I stayed okay. in her tent in a rainbow festival in the mud with her like five kids or something my kids were talking about that the other day how awful it was <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much everybody um feel free to t email me with suggestions or you know this is the first time i've ever done anything like this so i i hope it's been fun for you all and um you have any i loved that we could you know joanne i guess i kind of botched your question a little bit but um you know i like we'll have to come up with another discussion topic for next week too or next month thanks for the pictures terry i think i might have met you at whistle stop a couple of years shooting you might have yeah okay. it was a great great presentation terry yeah, yeah. thanks appreciate it really, really beautiful Fabulous.
Now I want to go back out and travel again. <laughs> you make me want. You make me want to travel. Yeah, well, yeah, good. it's tough staying home lately. <laughs> Be really cool to uh, organize a trip sometime. Like, yeah, I'd have to say it would be probably a year before I could afford it, but it'd be really neat to do something like that. We can do statewide trips, you know. I've organized trips for kids, photo photo trips for kids, but I've never done one for myself. Let's time travel and go back. <laughs> all right, everybody. Um, Good. I will see you all in a month. I'll post the date. Uh, or no, maybe I can figure it out real quick here. The next meeting, official meeting, will be the 21st, April 21st, the third Thursday of the month. Okay. All right. Can't wait to see your presentation, Raven, and I'll see you Thank all you. in a month. Oh, we're going to see each other before. We're going to do the... Uh... Oh, the, the Ferris wheel. Yes, of course. And I photographed that. We would make it, but... Yeah, Tr Trish and I did that Ferris wheel before. Bring a tripod, you need it. Um, okay. It, it's a blast to get that photo, get that wheel moving around all kinds of patterns. It's beautiful. It'll be interesting to see again, like I said this last month, but how we all interpret the same exact yeah. subject. Yeah, I'll post some of the my previous photos on, on the site. Great. Take a look. Can I make one, one uh, little shameless promotion here? Sure. Um, I've got a photo exhibit going on right now at the Fairfax Library, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's uh, it's documentary photography. It's not beauty photography, but it's uh, it's kind of with 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 a bit of a uh, a few stories mixed in. So if you well, happen to get a chance, if you have a flyer, why don't you post it on our Facebook page? Yeah, I'll do that. Thanks, Peg. I'll look forward to it. Cool. Thank you. Talk to y'all tomorrow. Yay. Great. All right, everybody. Sign it off. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Thank you so much, Terry. Okay, thanks. Bye.